So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that sometime over the, na- over the last three, four months, most of you in the crowd have received a mailing, an email, a phone call, a text, or one of those dreaded face-to-face solicitations for a gift. Am I right? So today, as I go through what I want to talk about, what I want you all to think about is how we change that mental model of what a gift is and what it means. So for me, I had an aha moment. I'm sure many of you had those. And mine came about 10 years ago during the financial crisis. I was working fundraising, and I had one of those great jobs where I had to go in front of people and ask them for money. And after asking for the money, One of the individuals, and I'm sure you all have experienced this too, I could tell just by the way he raised his hand that I was going to get a question I didn't want to answer. And he asked me, you know, we're in difficult times. It's a tough time. We just had our major financial crisis. I work for a bank. If you didn't support the community in that organization, would that program still really happen? And I knew the answer to that. And it's changed my life forever. And the answer to that question was unequivocally 100% yes. And the reason is because we're treating charity as gifts. My number one question is, is it still 1965? That's meant to be funny, so you guys could have left. And it's not. (laughs) But that was the first time that President Lyndon B. Johnson stood on stage somewhere and said, we're going to fight the war on poverty. That's over 50 years ago. And in 1965, in charity, Americans invested somewhere around 50 to $75 billion annually. Even if you adjusted that for inflation, it was about $100 million. Fast forward to 2015, and Americans invested over $350 billion in charity in this country. Pretty impactful, right? So over a course of about 50 years, we're investing four times the amount of money we did in 1965. But the real answer is, has anything changed? And the answer is no. In 1965, we had 40 million people living in poverty in the United States. In 2015, 46 million people. So what gives? What do we need to do? Well, the first thing is, why do we call a gift to charity a gift. And the definition of a gift, which this isn't surprising to anyone, is a thing given will- willingly with no thought of anything in return. So you see that beautiful little girl up on that picture? That's my daughter. And it's her seventh birthday in that picture. And my wife and I gave her a wonderful gift. And although I thought about it, after I gave her that gift, I did not ask her to go up into her piggy, ba- piggy bank and give me the money back to pay for the gift. Never crossed, would have never crossed her mind. So what I'm asking you all to think about today is stop thinking about charity as a gift. It's a completely shift in the mental model of why charity is important. Think of it as making an investment. Think about it. $350 billion every single year. 46 million Americans living in poverty. The definition you see of an investment is an action or process of investing money for profit or material result. Is not changing people's lives a material result? I think the answer is unequivocally yes. So what I'm asking you all to think about is expect more than just giving something without a return. Think of every dollar you invest in the charitable work that we all support as an investment in our community. What is a good rate rate of return? It's all over the board, but no different than when you go to your 401k or 403b, you should be asking those specific questions of the charities that you spend time with. What is my ROI? What am I getting in return and why does it matter? Well, it matters because more people are in need. If you look at this, probably the most interesting chart in Akron, Ohio, between 2010 and 2015, you will see that if you invested your money in your 401k in the stock market, you saw a fairly significant rate of return, somewhere in an average of about 4 to 10%. However, the bottom chart, if you look, the poverty level in Akron has seen a, an increase in poverty of somewhere between 2 and 10%. So what does that all mean? Well, 
if you would have invested $100,000 in 2010 in the financial markets, you would have had a return of about current day value of about $139,000. Pretty nice return, right? However, that's a 29% increase in wealth. However, in that same period of time, in our own community, there's been 20,000 more people that are now living in poverty than they were in 2010. That's a 10% increase in poverty. What's the major difference? Well, in my mind, it is exactly that mental model of how we approach charity. We can't think of this as giving a gift, because there is a return. The return is human capital. It's the ability to change lives. It's that transformational change on critical conditions that we solve at root causes for the long term. The same thing you expect when you put money into your 401k. I want to retire. I want the beach house. I want to make sure my kids are taken care of for college. I want to make sure the next generation is healthier than the generation that I'm in today. That's why it matters. So what can you do? Well, first, work with nonprofits that are talking about ROI and ready to return. Always embrace safety net. We need to help our most vulnerable, but don't do it if they're, not simply fo if they're only simply focused on the safety net. The best story I ever heard is that uh, a donor told me one time, you know, I can't give an organization money that puts no emphasis on their, on the, only on the efficiency of their work. It's like being on a 200 calorie diet. And what happens when you're on a 200 calorie diet? You starve. So if you're working with organizations that are strictly focused on that measurement of success by how efficient they can be on the dollar, you're probably starving the work. Invest in something different. Another important thing to think about as you think about a charitable investment is what is eventually happens to that gift. And one of the things that I've been passionate about in my work in nonprofit world is we can't continue to measure the success of nonprofits the way we always have. And one of the things I'm sure, again, just like those solicitations I talked about at the front end, you all have probably received an annual report from a charitable organization in the last 12 months. And one of the things that they continually do over and over again is celebrate success because they served more people. So 2016, they served 25,000 people, and that was an improvement because the year before they served 23,000. But I think we all should strive for the point in time where we celebrate that number going backwards as a measure of success because we actually solved a critical problem at scale and the problem no longer exists. That's when we know change happened. That's when we know we've made investments and that's when we know we've moved on from gifts. That's why it's important. So I'm gonna leave you all today with one of my favorite quotes of all time and it was that back in that era of 1965. It was from our 35th president. It was on a warm summer day in June of 1963, and this country was in the middle of the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis, we hadn't sent anybody to the moon yet. But our president stood in front of a crowd and said, our problems are man-made, therefore they can be solved by man. And man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Man's reason and spirit have often seen the seeming, solved the seemingly unsolvable, and we believe they can do it again. Why is that important? Well, again, think about 1963. I wasn't there, but I've had a lot of people tell me about it. And it was an era in time where we dreamt big. We thought about the things that we deemed impossible and figured out ways to do it. 46 million people living in poverty in this country, in my mind, is unacceptable. Let's not only dream about what we do rid of the things that John F. Kennedy was important to him in 1963, but let's talk about how we change lives at the core for the long term. So I ask you, change your mental model. Think about a gift as an investment in charity and how it's ultimately going to trans transform lives in our community. Thank you.